kicking and punting coach at the IMG Madden Football Academy. Here with me is Cody Thomas, local kicking and punting prospect, and we're going to go through a five-part series on how to punt the football. Many Division I football coaches talk about the punt as the most important play in football. Hard to believe, but it's true because of the amount of uh, yards that a, a punt can cover, how it can change field position completely. And so we're going to talk about the fundamentals. The first part of this series, we're going to talk about how many steps. Check it out. In this segment, we're talking about how many steps that we're going to take to punt a football. So one of the most important things you need to do is get in a balanced, smooth uh, stance right here. Our feet about shoulder width apart. Uh, it doesn't matter whether we have our left foot forward or our right foot forward. So my left foot forward is going to look like this. My right foot forward is right here. We don't want too much of a staggered approach or staggered stance like this. The problem with this is if I get a snap way over to my left or right, for example here I get it over to my right, to catch that ball I'm coming across my body and it's much more difficult to catch it. So that's why we want to be in a, in a balanced stance with just a slight stagger so that I'm ready and balanced in order to catch that snap. My two steps are smooth, relaxed steps. We're not walking to the ball, we're not running or sprinting to the ball either. Everything with the punt is under control, it's smooth, and then the, the swing up through the ball is where you get the explosion. So I start with the ball out in front of me when I catch it, and I'm taking my two steps, one, two, and punting the ball. What I don't want to do is have two uh, short steps, stutter steps, and I don't want to overstride and have too large of a steps either. Uh, the large steps are going to take away power in the same way that the small steps are going to take away power. So that's where this just the smooth, under control, two steps, and then we're exploding through the ball. So notice here, Cody has his right foot forward, two smooth steps, explodes up through the ball. Notice Cody is relaxed, feet about shoulder width apart, two steps, and punt. Hopefully you got a better idea now of how to punt using two steps. There are several punters that are playing collegiate and NFL football that do use the three steps, but the most common is a two-step method. So I recommend that you use that if you're starting out or even if you're a more advanced punter. Now we're going to talk about the drop, the most important part of punting. The important part of the punt is the drop, and there's several reasons for it. When you're kicking a field goal, that ball is stationary. So whether it's an extra point or a field goal and a holder's holding the ball, that ball's still. On a kickoff, the ball's on a tee, the ball's still. When you're punting, it's not like that. The ball's moving. Your body's moving, your legs are moving, your arm's moving, and you're trying to put that ball out in front of you. And so it's critical that the drop is there so that you get the right angle of the football off your foot so you can put it where you want it to go. You ask many NFL punters, college punters, what drill or what is it that they spend the most time on trying to improve as a punter? And 100% of them will tell you that it's the, it's the drop. So what we're looking to try and do with our punt is we're trying to get that ball out in front of us. If this is the ball perfectly straight out in front, angle straight downfield, we're gonna turn this nose of the ball, the front of the ball, just slightly in and slightly down to maximize that angle off our foot as we swing up and through the ball. We're gonna extend that ball straight out, right out here on a level plane, we want as little movement as possible. We don't want the ball moving up and down. We don't want to move catch it. We don't want to bring it in close to our body. We want the ball as still as we can, starting right from here as we catch it and extending it straight out in front of us. We don't want to throw the ball up in the air. We don't want to throw it down. You think of, hear the word drop and you think of the ball coming straight down, but actually you're extending it straight out on an imaginary uh, table. It'd be like you're, you're passing the salt shaker and you're sliding it off that table. That's what you're doing with this football and sliding it off there in order for your foot to reach out there and punt the ball. So the hand position is critical with the drop. I recommend either a handshake grip coming from the side, so your thumb is on the side seam and your middle finger is on the side seam, or an underneath grip, underhand grip, where all four fingers are underneath the football and my thumb is here on top. Either way, it's just a matter of personal preference, but what we don't recommend is having your hand on top of the football so that um, one, it's really tough to get the ball out comfortably out in front of you, and two, if there's wet conditions, that ball is going to be tough to grip. So that side grip is right here, or the underneath grip right here. But we want to make sure that ball is um, not in our palm and not 
too far out in our fingertips either. It's, it's kind of right in between in a comfortable spot where we can control the ball. Now that you have a better understanding of where the ball should be coming out of your hand, what level to drop it, how to drop it, and the consistency of what it takes to become a good punter, now is the time when you would go out, start hitting the ball off your foot to get that spiral, replicating that, that spiral every time to be consistent as a punter. You ask any college and NFL punter what they practice the most, there's no question, it's the drop. So you're not gonna wear your leg out by practicing the drop too much. You write down the sidelines of a field as much as you can during your downtime. You wanna spend as much time as you can dropping the football if you're gonna become a good punter. Next, we're gonna talk about receiving the snap. Receiving the snap, your steps. Now we get to more of the fun part in punting and you're actually your body position as you swing through the ball. So again, we're starting off in a good comfortable position, our feet balanced, shoulder width, and as we catch the ball, we're gonna take our steps out in front here and our body position stays right here. Our, our chest and our shoulders are up. We're not leaning backwards. We're not leaning forwards and crunching forward. We're straight up the way we would be when we're catching that snap. So when I catch it, I'm extending out, extend that arm out, and again, my leg swing, similar to when we're kicking a field goal, our knee and our ankle are locked. So what we're trying to do as we're punting is to, to take a, our step straight downfield and swing up through the ball. You can take a slight angle out to the right, even punting as so far as, as the guard would be if we catch the ball over the center, but a lot of punters make the mistake of going too far out to the outside, punting the ball over the tackle or even further outside, and that's where we get into bad habits. Uh, you get outside the zone where your protection is, and you also go too far out to the right if you're a right-footed punter and end up crossing your leg across your body and not being able to hit a spiral, hitting awkward balls, and losing a lot of power and accuracy. If you're keeping your body mechanics in mind with your chest up, your leg out in front of you, with your knee locked, your ankle locked, in a good position, that's going to give you a great chance to punt the ball effectively. Now we're going to see Cody demonstrate it full speed. Notice Cody's straight line as he swings downfield. He's not too far out to the right. His chest is up. Good ankle lock, knee lock as he swings up through the ball. Notice Cody gets the ball out in front of him. It's a good still ball. He drops it out in front of him, swings up and through the ball. So you notice the importance of good technique. The way Cody was catching the ball, the way his steps straight out in front of him, his good body position, body technique, and finishing the ball with his follow through. All the critical parts to punting a football, and a good drop especially. Now we're gonna look at pooch punting, something that's critical when you're inside the 50. In this fifth and final segment of the How to Punt a Football series, we're gonna talk about pooch punting. When you're inside the 50, you don't wanna just punt away, put the ball in the end zone, and let the offense come back out onto the 20. You wanna try and as a punter, and as a punting unit, put that ball inside the 10, inside the 20, to give your defense the best chance to stop that opposing offense. I'm gonna show you two different ways on how to do it effectively. The first and most common is the traditional punt, which we were talking about earlier, with that ball out in front of us, that angle just slightly in, but instead of that nose being down, now we're gonna bring that nose up a little bit. The reason why we're gonna bring that nose up is so that the ball does not turn over and the ball just hangs up there a little bit longer, doesn't get as much distance, but can still get the same amount of height. You don't have to change the way you hit the ball. You can hit the ball the same way you do any other punt, but with the nose up, it's not gonna go as far. The second most common way to pooch punt is the Australian rules method of, kick, of punting a football. So instead of hitting the ball, the spiral with the nose up, now we're gonna put the ball down here, more of like a field goal, Still punting the ball straight up through the way we would have a normal punt with our leg swing, but the difference is the way we're dropping it and holding it. So now the ball is down here, and we're going to kick the ball actually end over end instead of spiraling the football. Now we're going to we'll watch Cody demonstrate. What you just saw there was Cody demonstrating two different methods of pooch punting. Different, but yet both very effective ways to pooch punt and help your team pin the other team back inside the 10 or 20. That wraps up our series on how to punt a football. This fifth and final segment of the how to punt a football series, we're going to talk about pooch punting. When you're inside the 50, you don't want to just punt away, put the ball in the end zone, and let the offense come back out onto the 20. You want to try and as a punter, and as a punting unit, put that ball inside the 10, inside the 20, to give your defense the best chance to stop that opposing offense. I'm gonna show you two different ways on how to do it effectively. The first and most common is the traditional punt, which we were talking about earlier, with that ball out in front of us, 
that angle just slightly in, but instead of that nose being down, now we're gonna bring that nose up a little bit. The reason why we're gonna bring that nose up is so that the ball does not turn over and the ball just hangs up there a little bit longer, doesn't get as much distance, but can still get the same amount of height. You don't have to change the way you hit the ball. You can hit the ball the same way you do any other punt, but with the nose up, it's not gonna go as far. The second most common way to pooch punt is the Australian rules method of, of punting a football. So instead of hitting the ball, the spiral with the nose up, now we're gonna put the ball down here, more of like a field goal, Still punting the ball straight up through the way we would a, a normal punt with our leg swing, but the difference is the way we're dropping it and holding it. So now the ball is down here, and we're going to kick the ball actually end over end instead of spiraling the football. Now we're going to well, watch Cody demonstrate. comes out front, we're going to quickly try and catch that, catch and mold that ball right in front of us. Because in, in punting a football at the college and NFL level, you only have 1.3 seconds from the time you catch it to the time you punt it. That's why it's really critical there's no unnecessary movements. So we don't want to catch the ball and bring it in close to our body. We don't want to catch it completely um, unathletic and stiff-armed out like this. We're going to catch it right here, and then we're going to go ahead and, and approach taking our steps and extending the ball out in front of us. But right from here, it's critical that wherever you catch that ball, whether it's above your head, below your waist, to the left or to the right, you catch it and bring it right back to this position, right over our kicking leg, right out in front of us in a nice comfortable position, but quickly. You gotta have quick hands in order to get that ball off in those 1.3 seconds. In high school, you might have 1.4, 1.5, but the quicker you can get it off, the better. Now that you have a better understanding of receiving the snap, now you know how to catch the ball, take your steps, release the ball in a timely fashion. Next, we're gonna talk about body mechanics when punting, your body position, your leg position, and how we're gonna swing your leg.